and welcome along to the SU TV show. Well, the Blades are preparing for their second Premier League game this weekend as we welcome Aston Villa at home on Saturday. Carl and I will preview that game later in the show. But first, Carl, let's talk about Tuesday and that game away at Selhurst Park. I mean, what a start for the Blades. Yeah, um, it was perfect. You know, that's the best start I think I've ever seen live. Um, it was just perfection. You know, the, the way the boys kept the ball at the start, they played it around. Wonderful ball to Harmer, then Harmer's, you know, volleyed it out to Briarton Diaz. And from that moment, we knew he was going to try and cut in and get a shot off. And it, it was just brilliant. You know, I've I played shadow football against mannequins with first team and we've not scored like that. You know, it was absolutely brilliant um, and just just it stunned the Palace crowd. Uh, just wonderful. And then obviously they levelled and then McAtee with that amazing strike again. Yeah, he's, he's, his performances have been growing week on week. You're seeing him getting stronger, more confident. Uh, he goes past everyone, you know, he's, he's so good. But on, on Tuesday we saw him cutting in again, but he, he unleashed with his right foot. So I've not seen him do that. The, the confidence must be just through the roof with this boy. He's playing so well and, and he got his rewards. You know, he got a little deflection, but if you don't shoot, you don't score and, and wonderful. No, absolutely. And towards the end of that game as well, obviously when we went 3-2 down, there was that minute where we were so close and the ball was just in the box constant. And I was watching it at home and I was like, come on, it's got to go in, it's got to go in. Then we hit the crossbar as well. How frustrating do you think it is for the players when we, we've tried that hard and we've done so well to come away with no points? Well, it, it was a really crazy match. You know, um, you, you came across two of, of the best young talents in English football. Um, Elise, there were things he was doing that were unplayable. The third goal... The, the difficulty on that strike and the way he actually guided it into the corner was just incredible. Um, you take Ize and Elise out of the team and we, we were so much better than them. It's, it's just they've got to, they've been in the Premier League now 10 years. That's the equivalent of a billion pounds worth of, of TV money. They've invested it, they've got an incredible academy, but they were two players better than us, you know, standout players who could play for almost every team in the Premiership they go into their starting team so it was by no means anything against the boys I thought the boys played really well um, you had to, again the young lads coming on LaRussi came on uh, as you said he set up yeah. a chance he, really he looked well, really yeah. positive Andre Brooks, Brooks yeah. just another again, performance it was in that same minute where he, they had to save that shot yeah. as well yeah. we, we saw he was dictating the play he was, he was playing like a playmaker every match you're seeing a different attribute from Andre Brooks come to the fore and, and it, it's, it's frustrating because again we come away with nothing but I know the performances are a chalk and cheese to what we saw at the start of the season. And it's such, you know, it was such small margins on Tuesday that we've come away with nothing. And that's a Palace team that's invested, you know, they've had a billion pounds in 10 years. And, um, and we're only just getting beaten by two superstars. No, definitely. And let's speak about Gerbic. So we probably think he's going to be out possibly for our game against Villa. Obviously, he's really frustrated coming off that pitch. Yeah, um, you know, we've talked about his stature, he's six foot five. And I, I was up in the, the radio gantry giggling because the doctor's being adamant to him. You know, our, our club doctor is, is not he's not the biggest. He's certainly not six foot five, but he stood his ground against our goalkeeper. And, you know, you could see the frustration in him. He was desperate to stay on the pitch. He wants to be part. And, it, you know, it's been a tough start. You know, yeah. it, so you can see the heart in him um, and he'll be really frustrated now because of the protocols I think I think means he has to miss, miss the, the weekend so yeah hard it's been a hard start to him but you know it, it all it will work his character and obviously he's going to be frustrated because we've he's conceded a few goals since we've since he's started with the team but also it's not like we're not scoring we're averaging two goals a game at the minute and but coming away I think since January I think we've scored about six goals and we've come away with one point I mean, how frustrating is that when you're playing with the team, when you are you are doing better and you're scoring goals, but just not winning? Well, it's, it's, of course it's really frustrating, but the boys have to, and I, you know, I miss that, I try and be positive whenever I can. But the, the Brighton match, you were playing against one of the better teams who, who, with the ball and you were soaking what they were giving and then you were hitting them and we had chance after chance. I think we had 13 chances. You've got to take positives from that because if you're creating the chances, you're doing something right. 
you've just got to focus on the end product and you know the boys will be working on the finishing there and then you see we had two or three chances and we were more clinical against Crystal Palace so it's it's been a real tough season that anything that can go against us seems to have uh, and we've not had a rubber to green but you can see the determination the effort the work rate and the technical ability of the boys they're, they're playing really well um, and that's all you can ask for yeah and that breath of fresh air in Barita and Diaz as well that's come in obviously Chris took him off I think he had a tight hamstring I think he said after the game how important is it we save a player like that who's doing so well for us since coming in? Yeah, well, I, this this is something I, I, I was going to touch on social media is the the change in the injury situation in the club. You know, we've we've had two two years where the, the treatment room was the most busy place in the whole building, and now we seem to be getting the good performances from the players and the treatment room. You know, the the injuries are either long term ones that are coming back now, but. Something's going really well. The, the, the whole focus in the club, it's, it's positive. We're not getting the, the results we deserve and our performances deserve at the moment, but it's the toughest league in the world. So as long as you're improving and, and you're, you're, you're playing well, Briot Beriton Diaz has been, uh, he has been outstanding since he's come. He's fit in, fitted in, he's short shown his goal scoring abilities. But I, I was really impressed with the work rate from him and McAtee on, on Tuesday because they were in their own penalty area, closing down. McAtee was giving away corners because he's tackling back. They're not selfish players, they're on loan. You know, where it is more, you, you think more of yourself than the team, not these two. These two are, are all with the team ethic and that's because they're buying into what's going on with the manager and the coaching staff. No, no, it's brilliant. And well, let's catch up with a player we haven't heard, haven't heard and seen a lot of this season. That's Tom Davies. Well, Tom, thanks for joining us now. We haven't been able to see a lot of you, obviously, since you signed for the Blades, but how, how have you been fitting in behind the scenes? Uh, yeah, well, like you said, I haven't, I haven't been able to play too much and uh, make that connection with the fans yet, but, um, you know, it's been, it's been great my time here. Um, obviously, with the injury, recovering and spending a lot of time in the physio room and now getting back out to, to be with the lads, I think. I think it's a great group and I've managed to fit in well and... You know, just be around her and, and speaking to the lads and communicating. And, and yeah, and I'm just looking forward to get back on the pitch. And obviously you picked up that injury against West Ham. How's your recovery been with that? Uh, yeah, it's been good. I mean, it's been long. Obviously with the operation, it takes a bit of time to, you know, let the let the body heal and then strengthen it back up to getting back out on the pitch. So it's been a long one. Um, and I'm just, as I said, looking forward to being out there and helping the lads play and all the hard work that I put into this now I can... I can go and enjoy my time playing on the pitch. And what's the recovery process been like getting you back into training? Yeah, it's been um, slow and steady. Obviously, I, I joined the group late at the start of the season and uh, picked up some small injuries along the way there. So I think the, the manager and the staff have just been trying to gradually get me in so that we don't have any more uh, bumps in the road. And, and now I'm at a place where I feel good and I'm looking forward to it, yeah. So you're back in training then? How are you feeling in training? Yeah, I feel great in training. Um, you know, I've missed it. I've missed being out there, being part of the group, and yeah, it's just every day just taking it um, an extra step, step further, and seeing seeing how it goes. And so far, it's been great, and I'm feeling strong, feeling healthy. So, looking forward to it. Yeah. And are you back in training full time now? Yeah, back in full time, uh, fully with the squad. So, uh, shouldn't be too long till I'm back out on the pitch. Yeah. And you've been training with some of the new lads that have been coming in as well. How you've been bonding with them? Yeah, good. Um, as I said, it's a great group for me to even come into. It was, uh, the lads made it very easy for me and um, I'm very grateful for that. And the lads coming in, I'm just trying to do the same. Obviously, being a newer player to the group, I know what it can be like to come into a team. Um, I not know too many players. Obviously, I know Ben from playing our England with them and, um, and yeah, Sam and a few of the other lads that have come in have been great. So, we just got to keep working and keep pushing it, yeah. And when do you think we'll next be able to see you out there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping it's soon. I haven't got an exact date because it's it's just more how I'm feeling in my body. But I'm hoping it's going to be very soon, yeah. And what's the difference? I was going to ask you about, obviously, Everton, you were there. You, you've been there your whole career. What do you think to the Sheffield United fan base at Bramwell Lane? So yeah. Obviously, most teams that come to Bramwell Lane, they fear the fan base a bit because we, we are a raucous energy. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, and I think the times I did play here with Everton, I was, I was lucky enough it was COVID, so <laughs> I didn't have that, um, 
you know, that pressure from the fans that they give, like they did at Everton. Um, but I think the games that have been, uh, especially at home, uh, they definitely provide us with that extra bit of energy and, uh, you know, they give us that, that passion and motivation to push the game even further. And I think some of the late goals that we've scored in at home, especially, have, have really showed that when the fans have got behind us. So the lads feel it and appreciate it. Um, and yeah, like, like I said, they haven't had the, the closest connection with the fans yet, but I'm really looking forward to getting back and I'm building that, that sort of bond with them, yeah. No, and getting to know you on a, per, a bit more of a personal level and get to know a bit about, about you that you do outside of football as well. We've looked at chop value. Can you tell us a bit about that? Uh, yeah, so that's just... Uh, it's, a, it's a company I set up with um, a few people for the UK. We recycle bamboo chopsticks um, throughout the UK that would have previously gone to landfill and waste. And we make them into, you know, ho household items and... And things like that, just so that they they don't you know cut any more trees down or. And they look no they look really nice as well. Yeah, and I've seen some really that have good. made them into like um, wall sort of effects with yeah, them yeah. as well. What gave you the idea? Um, well, I've I've always been passionate about that. I mean, football's always been my main focus, but especially with picking up injuries and having time away, where I've got to think about other things in life. Uh, the environment's always been something I've been interested in. So, so yeah, just something on the side that I really feel passionately about and I'm, I'm grateful I can help out in, in that little bit of a way. Well Tom, thanks for joining us here on SUTV, really appreciate it. Thank you, thanks. It's Aston Villa next and uh, just thinking back to that game earlier in the season, desperately disappointed not to get a, a three point hole. Yeah that was another frustrating one, um, conceding so late on, um, but we know that they're, they're a good team, they're a solid side so we're, we're going to have to be up, up to it work hard over the next couple of days in, in recovering from, from the game a few days ago and then get ready for the game on the weekend. Have you watched them much this season? Because they're, they're one of the sides of the season in many ways, aren't they? No, I haven't, to be fair. Um, obviously, you see highlights and stuff of, of some of their goals and, and yeah, everyone, everyone's been speaking about them, really, so you, you can't really miss what they've been doing. But, but again, I like to focus on, on myself and Sheffield United, especially when you're playing against these guys soon as well. So. Yeah, you have a little a little peek at how they're doing in highlights and stuff, but no, I haven't really sat down and watched them. Ollie Watkins has really caught the eye with his goals and, and assists as well. Uh, how do you contain him? Yeah, he's a good player, um, but I think you get play against good players week in, week out in this league. Um, so I just think we need to, to focus on ourselves and, and do do the right things. And obviously he's a threat once he once he gets in front of goal, but I think if we can try and limit that as much as possible, then, then we've got a good chance in the game. Back playing at Bramall Lane, and the crowd could make a difference to this to this battle ahead, couldn't they? Yeah, obviously the crowd are amazing for us, especially when we're at home. The away fans too; they get right behind us. But at home, obviously a lot more of them. Um, and yeah, they're right behind us from from the first minute to the last. As a full back or wing back, uh, how has the the role changed over the years for you? Um, not not too much, to be fair. Um, obviously, wing back. There's a lot more. Like license to to get forward and, and make the box and stuff, but but again with how the manager wants me to play, he doesn't have a problem with me me getting forward from full back as well when we're playing in a four. So so it's been nice. How demanding is it physically? Yeah, it's tough. It's tough, but um, yeah, it's, it's all part of the game. Uh, Jaden Bogle there. Well, Carl, looking ahead to our game on Saturday against Villa, how are you feeling going into that one? Uh, well, I'm you know, I'm generally optimistic. I think every, you know, the club's going in the right way. The players are performing well. Um, it's one of the big boys. Aston Villa have done incredible this season, and we gave them a real match at their place. Uh, obviously, not a big game for Cameron Archer. He'll he'll be wanting to be involved uh, as much as possible. But it, it's going to need to be a raucous atmosphere. It's a, it's a late kickoff, which is a bit of a strange one. Um, but the players, we've seen how the players feed off the energy from the, from the fans. So it's a tough match, but we're going to be taking heart into it that we created so many chances against Brighton. We scored such great goals against Crystal Palace and two wonder players were the difference. So even though we, we've gone, we've won two losses on, on, on the bounce, we'll be going in with positives and have confidence. And the boys are, you know, they're, they're, they're showing great determination and they're showing great character um, so I'm, I'm excited for this one. And Newcastle broke their unbeaten run of 17 games at home on Tuesday night as well I think they lost 3-1 there is that a bit of positive we can think you know their form is going a little bit off a little bit 
Um, I don't know. I, I, as I said, we've, we've just lost two and we can take positives. Aston Villa are, are in the top four. They've had an incredible season. Um, they'll be using this now. They'll be wanting a bounce back. Emre will be wanting to see how his players handle it. So if anything, I think they're, they're going to be coming at us, trying to prove their manager. No, you know, it was a blip. So we've got, you know, the dressing rooms, It's as, they, they've been there, they've done it. We're, we're going to know we're going to have a real tough battle on our hands. But the formation, we don't know what the, the manager's changed formations. He's changed for our personnel. We've got people coming back. I'm excited to see how we employ our, our fit players against an Aston Villa team. And that, that's what's been exciting for me, that you're going into the game not, you know, the other day we didn't know what strikers were going to play. Um, and that, that's exciting because we've got competition and, you know, I, I, I really feel we have a team that can challenge Aston Villa. And they are currently fifth in the table and doing, they are doing so well this season. But when we played them in December, we drew 1-1 and I think they did score in the 97th minute as well. So I think putting ourselves up against them, there is fight there for us and we look so strong. Yeah, well, they, we've shown that we can play against this team of players. We played against Aston Villa recently and we acquitted ourselves well. You don't go in there complacent thinking you've done it once so it's going to just naturally happen. You're going to have to be on your top. Every premiership match for you to get something from, you must play at the top of your ability technically and you have to be physically there and, and give everything. And that's what we've got at the moment. I don't think anyone can question any player in the squad's um, aptitude, how, how they've, they, they've, they've gone about themselves. They, they've given all, they're following instructions. You, you know, I, that's what I'm excited for, to see how we set up and what we try and do, because... And are you hoping that Chris does continue with that tacking, tacking front? Oh, I want, score, I want goals. Yeah. I want goals. The, 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 the fans want goals. Chris wants goals. You know, he, he's Sheffield United through and through. He, he, he wants the best for us. He knows how the, the Blades fans see it. Blaze fans want determination and attacking football. Um, so we, we, we all know what we need to do. And, and, you know, I've no doubt that the boys are going to acquit themselves and we're going to have a, a good attacking, positive um, start to the game. And who are you hoping to see in that start in 11? I can't, I, because then it gets favourites. Everyone's <laughs> expecting me to say it, Willa Sula 1 to 11, because they all know I think the world of it. But no, whoever takes the field is shown the manager during training that they deserve to be there. He, play, he picks people on performances and how, the, how he sees the match going. So, you know, it doesn't matter really who I want to see because I don't know his players as well as, well as the manager. I just know whoever he picks is going to be the best lineup that, you know, he sees to, to get the points. That's all we have time for on the SUTV show. But if you want to hear more, please join us over on the SUTV podcast available on Apple Podcasts or Spotify.